Meanwhile, the marauders, reinforced by Chinese troops, had marched for days in their drive toward the airfield at Michinon. <laughs> Okay, so this has come out fairly well. Uh, I've got a lot of flashing. This was because the pattern didn't release properly in the in the mould. Yeah, so it got stuck in there, and um, you know I pulled a bit of a bit of the sand away when I took the pattern out. Um, the in the the vents vents seem to work quite nicely. Um, the none of the Finger ridges are, are missing any material at all. That's good. Um, that's the sort of biggest defect I've got. So it's shrunk. Um, that's what the risers are for. It should pull in from the riser when it shrinks. The metal contract, and I'm using extrusion. And this, I think, from what I understand, will shrink more than material sourced from other products. So. I think if you use castings, you're probably better off. But I mean, I'm not. I'd rather save my my cast alley for for important stuff. This is um this is you know I want to get this right. I want to learn from it. But at the same time, um, we can just throw the old greenhouse that I've got in there. So I think that happened because my my sprue this bit wasn't fat enough. So this had solidified 
by the time this great big lump of aluminium needed to pull the additional material in from the riser I think, or is that the feed, I don't know, whatever, but it, that's, that's where it should be pulling the material from, yeah? So, um, I wasn't going to try this again, I've, I've got very little sand left, but I'm, I just want to, uh, I just want to get this right, really. Um, you know, everyone likes a nice catapult, don't they, but it's more a learning thing, I suppose. So, we'll try, we'll try again, um, if I haven't completely totaled the pattern. Which I might have done winding those screws in, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be alright. I'll fix it if I have. We'll try it again. We'll use silicon grease on the on the pan. Nothing sticks to that. <laughs> and then um, I'll cut these gates differently, and hopefully we'll avoid that shrinkage in the in the side there. Yeah. But other than that, I'm happy with the detail that's come out. We've got um, again like. I think part of the reason I've got a bad finish and bits of uh, bits of sand embedded in here is because um, I did a lot of damage when I pulled my pattern out. So hopefully, hopefully the use of silicon grease will will sort that. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, nice. I put some of this on uh, Lou Grease, Lou Grease, Lou Grease, Lou Grease. It's a PTFE uh, grease grease with PTFE in it and that I think was a mistake it is very heavy and it seems to have been soaked into the uh, into the mold a certain amount so when I find the rest of this here we go uh, we'll just use yes yeah, it's, it's not great I think it'll be alright though we'll just use um, a, a a much lighter PTFE lube so we that we've got this GT85, which does smell bloody amazing. It's uh, probably, pr probably the uh, the best smelling lubricant around. I figure we'll stick that on, sit it on there, put a good bit on the uh, sand. I don't think this will this will combust once it's dried. The grease definitely does. I've tried it before. This one shouldn't once it's dry. Lots of that. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Silicon's definitely the right way to go about it, yeah? Okay, so uh, shut up. all right. So um, all in all, this came out a lot nicer. And I know it probably doesn't look it right now. I've not even gone over this with the brush actually. Let me just brush it. Okay, all right. So we've got this one cleaned up a little bit uh, already. Probably you can see the the defect there. There's another little hollow there, 
and this side was just starting to hollow out a bit. I think this whole handle area is sort of contracted a bit because it's not the nicest of finishes, you know. Uh, could be nicer, could be nicer, but um, I can't have another go anyway because I've run out of uh, run out of material. So I'm gonna get this one cleaned up, and uh, we'll just uh, we'll just fire a couple of things with it. Um, First used widely in World War One by the Germans. The gas has a yellow-brown appearance and can smell like garlic, horseradish, or well, mustard. And it was after the Germans used mustard gas on Polish. Okay, so if it was all about the clicks, I probably would have uh, probably would have polished these up. But um, I'm more interested in learning learning about my casting. So we've left these uh, rough cast, um, yeah, there's still little blebs on them, uh, but that's, that's, that's good. So I'm gonna keep these, we'll, uh, we'll go and have a little plink, but I'm gonna keep these and use them as a sort of datum point, I suppose. And uh, you know, it didn't take long to make the pattern up, well, it did take quite a long time, but not too long. Um, and I can, you know, play around in new patterns and uh, different casting techniques. With my sprues and that, I need um, I need some more sand and a bit more caro before I do any more in here. Um, but what? Uh, it will give us a sort of reference point, wouldn't it? Uh, I can see how how my casting's improving. Let's go and uh, see if these actually work. only got one piece of nickel elastic. Yeah. Pretty good, it's pretty accurate. Let's uh let's put a little target down range. Hey. Blip. Rock. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> 